You didn't have to like pee in any bottles or anything, did you? Like you hear in the no. news. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Shane the Rise and Grind Picker and the video I'm about ready to show you I think is very important to me and I think that as an Amazon seller you need to know what Amazon employees actually go through on a daily basis. And one funny question I did ask in this was did you have to pee in a bottle? The answer was no. But I think you need to see this video because it's important to know how Amazon treats their employees and how their employees do their job. And I think that's going to help you out as a seller. At the end of the day, you have to understand Amazon's business as well. But like if like, and this is my next question. Like, let's say the line's moving and you picked up some and dropped it and damaged it. Like, would there be something you would just click and say item damaged? Or yeah. Something like that? Yeah. They got a... They got a button on your computer that says uh, if package is damaged, you just hit it and then you put it to another toe and then they'll take it back to the other side. Gotcha. That yeah, makes got, sense. Yeah, they got damage buttons and everything. Yeah. That's easy. Um, wow. I mean, it's a good place to work, but like I said, you got to meet that 100 uh, totes an hour. If you don't meet that, then they won't keep you on. So you didn't have to like pee in any bottles or anything, did you? Like you hear in the no. news. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> so you were allowed to take the bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was like my top question. Probably. <laughs> That's in the back of my head. I just had to ask it. I know. I know you hear about the bottles of pee. <laughs> like that, that article came out, I think last fourth quarter. It was like right in November, I think. And, it said Amazon employee says that they had to pee in a bottle because they weren't allowed bathroom breaks. I'm like, that sucks. But yeah, I but mean, uh, tell us if we're wrong, Tony. But if you take a bathroom break, it's going to impact your metrics, right? Yep. Your numbers. Yep. So, and they do it on lunch too. They won't take it off when you take lunch either. They'll keep the thing going. That gets you too. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. That's a that's Most a very high. I I think the resellers that's one reason why we wanted to have you on because from our perspective you know we don't think about how much work is really going on at the warehouse you know to us it's just like you know it's this magical place that we send stuff to and yeah you know yeah. it just magically sells and <laughs> you yeah. know so we kind of wanted to put a human face behind it because there's so much work that goes into it oh yeah well you and know? especially like i think a lot of resellers don't realize like there are a lot of employees that touch your items. Like, I mean, I was in retail, so I know, like, they touch it when they box it up from the manufacturer. Then it goes to D.C. Then it goes from D.C. and gets palletized on trucks. And then it goes to the stores. And I'm sure Amazon has a very similar supply chain. But what's crazy to me is just how many employees, like, actually touch your items. Oh, no, I have a little comment to make. So. Yeah. Um, I've received several items to my house that weren't mine from Amazon. And I thought, well, what do I do with this? How do I return this or get this to where it belongs? And you don't know where this person lives. So what do you do with it? So I, I went to the post office one day and just threw it in the big bin that was there. I thought, well, they'll know what to do with it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that wrong address. Um, so then, but I got two more items and I thought, well, what in the world? So I called Amazon, like, like the main number on the box. And, um, they said, well, you can just keep it. I said, well, I can <laughs> certainly return it to whoever needs yeah. to go to. And they said, no, just keep it. I was like, mm. great, right on. So now I've got some great new products for free. <laughs> Thank you. And, and you know, what? I get so many returns of, of like the question of the return was, was literally, <laughs> I'll get a return that says item or address not valid. And then it'll say, you have a return for this item. I'm mm -hmm. like, you just told me it wasn't valid. <laughs> and then, and then a, a, like a, a week later, I'll get, you have been reimbursed for this item. We as resellers ship, sh you know, send shipments to the warehouse. They're stored at the warehouse. They're picked and packed by guys like Tony. Um, so that's what it stands for. 
Like, what did it feel like? The atmosphere, the attitude. Oh, it, it was good. They all mm -hmm. had good. I mean, all my managers were nice and stuff. Good. Mm -hmm. It's just they didn't tell me we had to meet that quote. I mean, that's the only problem. <laughs> that dang quota just keeps getting in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Did you feel supported by your manager when they said, oh, well, it's not my problem? No, I don't care too much about them. <laughs> I didn't talk to them that much. But your co-workers, you got along with your co-workers pretty well. And um, what mm -hmm. did your co-workers have to say about this problem? Did they have the same issue with the quota? Oh, no, I only didn't talk to them that much because we always got sent home. We didn't have nothing <laughs> to do. <laughs> <laughs> sent home for no work. Nice. That's crazy though, man. That's so that what the quota that you can't even meet. Um, you saw your fellow employees caring less about the packaging of the items and the totes and the boxes because they had to meet that quota. And so when money becomes an issue, the worker cares less about the quality of their work because they're just trying to survive at that mm -hmm. point. So yeah. they have no incentive to do quality work that's that you as the merchandisers would would expect yeah because they're trying to rush they're trying to meet the quota and also ship as fast as possible yep and then the product suffers and gets broken or lost right. or whatever because they set these unreasonable expectations of the employees well i mean that's the thing is they set a lot of unreasonable stuff for sellers too so Okay. Um, here's an example. <laughs> she's like, oh, yeah. crap. Well, here's an example. Like, if you have an action figure, okay, and it gets shipped out in the packaging, it comes loose in the box and it becomes, you know, like that little plastic jewel case becomes loose. Mm -hmm. If the customer reports that you sold them a used item, Am Amazon will immediately suspend you. <gasps> immediately. And they won't ask you any questions. They it suspend you. All your products go off of live and go into where you the people can't buy them, and then you have to write a plan of action and they ask questions after they suspend you. Yeah, and if you get your account deactivated, you never get it back. Now, a lot of times you can, but you have to hire an Amazon lawyer. Yes, you have to pay money because Amazon will hold your money and not give it to you and fight. And a lot of people have had issues with that. And even on the seller side, like they don't always play nice. So Man. I was like an Amazon seller. I tell people on my channel, like even in these live shows when me and Marcy do shows together, it's not if you get suspended, it's when <laughs> you get suspended. Because at one point, if you're doing enough volume, you will get suspended. But I use like, and I told people this, I think last week, I use a service called Seller Bench. And they will look into everything your shipments your shipping your 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 inventory that's been checked in inventory that hasn't been checked in and they file they they don't charge you it's technically free kind of unless they find something to appeal and if like amazon will not pay you some stuff like if a seller says i didn't get it and they kept it and it's marked delivered amazon will not offer you that and on some of those cases, you should get a reimbursement and seller bench will go in and look at it and they will file the reimbursement on your behalf. Here's the problem when you find with e-commerce sites is it, it costs so much to get in the ball game. The barrier of entry is too high. So not anyone has like $400,000 laying around to go like get a website and make clickable links and get like a merchant, like a merchant license for taking cards and it costs a lot of money and so like amazon they just jeff bezos lucked out like he got into this when it was first starting and people were like we'll do it for free because we want you to we want to see what happens you know and mm -hmm. you know so i think there's just the barrier of entry is just very very high yeah gotcha king dong. <laughs> it's not king dong it's jing dong King Dong sounds like an adult site. Eric in Ohio said. <laughs> Eric in Ohio. <laughs> we got to say that one. <laughs> <But it's really laughs>
King Kong. You know, Tony has shipped quite a few interesting items when he worked at Amazon. <laughs> what did you? What? What kinds of things did you ship? That was. That Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> Are you allowed yeah. to see them on air? Oh yeah, we want to know. Adult products. Uh, I ship dildos and vibrators <laughs> and games about poop. Games about poop and everything. <laughs> Hey, you might have shipped some of my items for me. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm some pretty messed up <laughs> items on Amazon. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I've sold some pretty messed up items. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a demand. <laughs> there is. There is. 